All right, Bob, we're going to talk about wrist pain. Now, we're going to talk about a very various reasons of wrist pain. For example, if you fell on your wrist, sprained it, possibly broke it, or if you have chronic pain that's been bothering you for weeks or months or even longer. Like overuse. Right, from maybe the job you work at, maybe a sport like hockey right. that you're working that wrist all the time. We're going to show you answers on how to get this wrist better quickly. Hold on, 9.3 seconds, and we'll be right back. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we're going to sing the song together. Bob, Bob and or, Brad. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Okay, here we go. Bob, we're going to take it from the first. Uh, well, let's back up a second. There are actually two people that are, are having this trouble. Having this trouble. We're All doing right. it for our friend Chris the Pharmacist, his son Zach. And? He's. And Sabrina. Sabrina. Yeah, and Sabrina. So Dan, Danny is, he's doing the camera right now. Yeah, it's a significant he's cool other. With us. Yeah, so we're going to give this for those people as well. But there's a lot of people with wrist pain. This right. is going to help. Uh, the first thing is if you happen to have wrist pain as a result of falling on that wrist and you have problems with it, it's swollen and it's painful to move. You've got to go see a doctor. Yep. You've got to get x-rays. X-ray vision. Yeah, because if you do have a broken bone or a separation, it's going to be a little bit different treatment, more specialized. Right. You, you may need to see the doctor or a therapist. But if it's just sore, you feel very comfortable it's not broke, what you really need to do is get yourself a cold pack. Put a cold pack on that wrist 15 to 20 minutes, two to three times a day. Uh, the next thing you can do if it hurts with movement is just go buy a generic wrist brace spl brace or nice splint blood. doesn't have to be a, a fancy one anything that protects it so that Drug store yeah and you're going to do that for a few days to get the swelling down and get it moving again okay if you have a stiff uh, let's break okay number two we've got the painful wrist from either a fall that's recovering or maybe it's arthritis or maybe it's just painful and you really don't understand why Hands out like this. We're just going to do some simple range of motion. Down with the wrists and up. So we're extending now and flexing. And do that 10 times. But while you do this, note if one hand is tighter than the other. So, you see, Bob, can you give an example of this wrist being... <laughs> <laughs> so this one's all the way down. You can see that. And look at this one. It only goes about half the range of motion. We've got a tight wrist here, so keep that in mind. And, you know, maybe it'll loosen up with repetition. Otherwise, I'm going to show you a quick stretch on that. Then next, go side to side like this. That's called ulnar and radial deviation. Again, see if one goes normal, another one doesn't go so much. If you see one uh, asymmetry between the wrists, take a note of that. Uh, if you do see, like Bob had, his left wrist was tight, it didn't go down, take the other hand, grab over the palm, not over the fingers, because we want to isolate the wrist and gently stretch it down and back up. When you do these stretches, it's not going to be aggressive. It's not going to stretch, stretch, stretch where it really hurts. It's stretch, gentle pain, back off. Repetition each time. Hopefully, you'll gain some range. You may have to do this for a few days if it's a very chronic and long-term tightness or you got to break up a little scar tissue, perhaps. Uh, you can do the same like this, going up, repetition, 10 times, do two or three times a day, and the same with the radial deviation. I just grab here and work it whichever way is tight. Okay, good. And if it is from arthritis, just the range of motion itself and the stretching is going to bring that, that pain. Will help. Yep. All right, All right next. This next option is a little more aggressive, you can try it. If it works and it feels good for you, do it. If not, don't. And it's a decompression. It's Brad's invention. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I've been doing this for years, and I thought, well, I should show people at home. It really works well, and we've had good responses by people who are doing it. So let's say this is a wrist. I want to loosen up. You can do it to both of them. This has to be loose. Sometimes if you're starting, you put a pillow here to rest your arm. I'm able to relax my hand without that. Take the other hand, grab above the wrist. And what I'm going to do, and if you look right here very closely, you'll see I'm decompressing and actually separating the joint a little bit. It's not like you're pulling it apart an inch or anything. It's just, uh, you know, 16th of an inch or whatever. Decompression. 
If it feels good, you do it, you know, up to five times. Now the next step to advance this is pull and watch what happens to my wrist at this point. I'm going to pull and I'm going to rotate. My palm stays still, but I rotate that. And boy, that is a nice, you know, okay. if it... It's very clever. Yeah, if it feels good, you do it. If you do it and you get sharp pain, do not do it, particularly Stop. after right. a fall. Absolutely. It's not ready for it right. yet. Okay, so that only takes a little bit of time, actually. So we're going to the next number. Number number four, we are talking, and now I think in regards to Zach and Sabrina, they really need to uh, look at this one Focus carefully. Focus on number four. Yep. So we're going to start out 90 degree bend in the elbows, put them like this, palms, well, put thumbs up to start with. And what we're going to do, assess range of motion in pronation and supination, and what that means is pronation means palms down, supination, palms up. Make sure that your arms are by your ribs and keep them glued there because we don't want to have this going on. This doesn't count. This is glued in tight. Palm down, palm up, and then compare right to left. Now, if you do this, palm down, they look even. And you go palm up. This is my uninjured one or my painful wrist. And I only go this far where it's not even with this hand. We've got a problem here. That's and, the culprit. Yep, yeah, that's... That's what we have to address and get that stretched out so both of them are equal. It is pretty normal that palms go flat like this on most people right. and they go down like this on most people. Yep. If they're both the same and they're not flat, well, you could stretch both of them. But if one, particularly the sore one, is limited one way or the other compared to the good arm, stretch, 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 we're going to show you right now. All right. Okay, the stretch on this is relatively simple. However, it does work quite a bit better if you have a second person help you. So if my palm does not go up like this, and this is usually the culprit uh, versus not going down. Uh, you can work on right. We're going to stretch yeah. it like this. If you're by yourself, you take this hand and reach around above the wrist joint, grab the, the forearm, and twist. So you're going to really get a good, a good grip with the tips of your fingers right there and twist and relax. Hold and relax. Or you can hold it for a longer period of time. Now the key is, is relaxing this arm as much as possible. Right. If you have someone to help you, Bob's gonna show you how that would happen. I grab them like this. And Gentle stretch. Yep. If it creates sharp pain, you're going too aggressive. Make sure you don't go to that. Go up to the point of pain. Use both hands. And then come back. So, he, yeah, he's got both hands on there. It's easier to relax when there's more support like this. Bob, Say uncle. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bob is strong like bull in the Popeye wrist he right. has. So he's not using all of his force, and that's okay. So about 10 repetitions. This is something that should be addressed Many times a day, right? About every two hours. Yep. Uh, obviously, you're not probably not going to have someone to assist you, so you're going to be doing the ind independent uh, technique. All right. Awesome. Now we do have one more technique for taping, kinesio taping. Uh, Zach, I think you should try this. Uh, I think it would be very helpful for you, particularly because you're in the midst of hockey season Agreed. and you need to max out your potential. Sabrina, that you can do this too if you want. <laughs> I don't think it'll be needed. Okay, so if you want to have treatment on your uh, forearm and wrist all the time, you can use kinesio tape. It's used all the time, particularly with athletes. You always see athletes taped with kinesio tape for their injury. Uh, so Zach, this is what I want you to do. Uh, obviously, get yourself some kinesio tape. Um, we're going off of uh, John Gibbons. He wrote this book. He is an expert on kinesio taping, yep. particularly athletes. He's the guy. And he doesn't do just athletes. He does world-class athletes. Right. He knows what he's doing. So that's where I'm getting this information from. Uh, he likes rock tape. You don't have to use rock tape. He likes it, so I know it's good. You can get whatever you can get your hands on. We found other ones work well, too. So 
you're going to need one piece of tape about 11 inches long. When you cut it, make sure you cut the ends rounded like this. It makes it last longer. Clean your skin very good. If you want to get serious about it, because we want this tape to last on there for up to five to seven days. Sure. If you shave the hair off your arms, it's going to stick better. It's going to last longer. You don't have to do that. Try it without it first. If it comes off in a day or two, shave. It's going to last better. Right. And, you know, you'll be really excited about that. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay, so the trick to doing this, it's not easy to do the first time. So you got to plan on probably doing it once or twice to get started. Probably screwing up. If you don't spend any time trying to peel the non-sticky side off like that. It's a waste of right. time. It's made to just tear like that. Kinesio tape stretches in one direction only. That's the way we want it to, to do it. So tear it off like this. Take that. Throw it away. Okay, now we're going to take the part that's sticky, start here. This is a position specifically you have to do. Your wrist has to be flexed, elbow straight, okay? And so we're looking just like this, okay? I thought I missed one thing, but I, I, I think I'm doing it just perfectly fine. I want to make sure I do it just like John talks about it. We're going to start here on the ring and pinky side, just above those knuckles. You go oh, here. Outside of the hand. Yep, just yeah. like that. Uh -huh. Now, what we're going to do at this point is peel it off and do it like I'm doing it. Because what will happen if the sticky side touches a sticky side, you get a mess. That's You'll know what yeah. I'm talking about. Now, sometimes with kinesio tape, you actually want to stretch and stick it. In your case... You do not want to stretch. You put your hand down like this. A little stretch, but not much. Try and keep the wrinkles out. You go all the way up. Okay. Now, if this happens to you and you don't get up to the elbow, you need to cut yourself a longer strip. I'm not going to do that now because I'm just letting you know this is not quite. You could try it like here, uh, but I would take it off and cut one a little bit longer. Now, the end, you should not stretch at all. Slight stretch here, no stretch here, no stretch here. We're going to wipe it down. Okay, there's a way to heat set this. I'll show you that in a minute. But then you're going to take a short piece. Now, this piece, we're going to rip like this. And this, we are going to stretch. Okay, so I'm going to be careful. Take that off of there. We're going to cross at the near the end of this, which will be up here if it was done the way we really want it in theory. Tape down, get that stuck down, and now I'm gonna leave that on just like that. Now I'm going to stretch about 75%, so you pull it all the way till it doesn't stretch anymore, back off a little bit, and then drop down. That'd be up there, right? Yep, it would yeah. be near the end of the tape, which right. in, you know we want that closer to the elbow. And then we drop that down. Now, one thing you may want to do, and this is my idea, and I'm sure John would be fine with it. This may have a tendency to come off. Or crawl up. Yeah. So what you're going to do is just take another piece, put it here, stretch it, bring it around, and bring it there. And then you take one of the... Here. You, you yeah, one of, the, one of the long ones. Where did the oh. long one go? That's all right. Yeah, here. Yeah, there we go. So you, you take what you're throwing away, and you take one side of it, and it actually goes really nice and smooth. If you put the shiny side on, it sticks a little bit, so the not-so-shiny side. And then you rub on it for about 30 seconds, kind of fast. That heats up the tape. It helps secure. Adhere it. Yep, get that adhering, adhesion down to the... To the skin, you have to do this. Eh, I'm not going to do it for 30 seconds, but nah. you got the idea. The next thing is, is monitor this. If it gets red, itchy, anything like that, you take it off. You cannot do it. Right. Your body is reacting to the tape, the adhesive, and you just cannot do it. You're allergic. doesn't happen to very many people. Um, my daughter. Yeah, well, yeah. that one yeah. person. In yeah. general, a lot of people. Right. Yeah, you just... Yeah, we don't have any stats. I knew uh, I was <laughs> Happened to me, too. Did it? Well, yeah. okay, 50-50. Yeah. 
Sabrina did yeah. too. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, chances are you won't be able to use it because you'll react. No, you <laughs> see you, you, you see people all the time. Uh, but if you do you react, you're not a right. candidate. And then you leave that on as long as you uh, it stays on. I've had it on for five to seven days on my leg once. Uh, and I was swimming, taking a shower, and it stays on. Yeah. So, Zach, you know, well, you're probably great. bored out of your skull listening to this babble. Ah. But that is going to help you. Make sure you do this taping technique. It's going to be a wonderful Go to a drugstore. Yeah. Go yeah, to the drugstore. Yeah. His dad is a yeah, drugstore. Yeah. <laughs> he can take Bye. care of it. Yeah. Goodbye.